distinguished Madam Chief Justice and President of the Supreme Court, Madam Deputy Chief Justice, um, the Attorney General, my good friend Justin Maturi, ministers uh, present, distinguished ambassadors, uh, present and high commissioners, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I will not forget judges of the Supreme Court. Good morning. Um, I am truly happy to be part of uh, this first ever launch of a report of NCAJ. I'm told that um, this is the inaugural report, even though NCAJ has been here for 10 years. I don't know whether it's by coincidence that I am present here today, or it was somehow waiting for me. <laughs> and uh, as I walked in uh, here, I was, w I was looking for the maze, because normally when I come to where the judiciary is, I normally see a maze. So I don't know whether it was forgotten today, or it was not supposed to be here. Oh, this is not the judiciary function, it is NCAJ. I was uh, doing that because uh, mem some of the members of the NCAJ have been complaining that uh, the judiciary is bullying them. But with the absence of the maze, I think that allegation is not true. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm honored to be here for this launch. It is highly encouraging to observe such an impressive assembly of diverse actors united in common endeavor. The struggle for a just society is a noble end in and of itself. At the same time, it cannot be denied that progress in this quest directly leads to significant improvement in the lives of all people. The efficacy of our justice sector, whether and how we uphold the rule of law and administration of justice, is key to the performance of the institutions of our political economy. Our most salient aspiration from the Kenya Vision 2030 to the government's plan for the bottom-up economic transformation agenda rely on the strength and credibility of the justice system. Since the establishment of the National Council on Administration of Justice more than 11 years ago, it has been gratifying to witness its steady growth and maturation of constituent organizations. As a result, public confidence has risen steadily with more and more Kenyans seeking to access justice and majority expressing satisfaction in the services provided. The impressive transformation of the sector is by no means inadvertent. Rather, it is the outcome of effective coordination of relevant actors on a consistent basis. This successful model holds important lessons for other sectors in effective approaches to coordinating diverse actors to achieve far-reaching sectoral reforms. And on this account, I want to say well done to NCAJ. <clears throat> I note with great appreciation that despite these considerable achievements, you are not resting on your laurels. The good work continues, building on the encouraging achievements from past efforts. 
This is why the current strategy is titled a coordinated and cohesive justice sector serving the people of Kenya. The government pledges its support to NCHA to deliver on this plan, particularly on the seven priority areas. One, strengthened NCHA coordinating mechanism for improved access to justice. Two, enhanced criminal justice reforms. Three, strengthened court users committees to coordinate justice at all levels and especially at the local level for improved access to justice for vulnerable groups, enhanced civil sector justice reforms especially. Five, strengthened partnerships. And six, stakeholder engagement. And finally, effective monitoring and evaluation for the justice sector. The coordinating mechanism, which is responsible for many achievements, is due, to, is due for enhancement if the sector is to rise to its next level of efficiency and efficacy. It is time to also enhance criminal justice system reforms. Apart from credible and expeditious due process, criminal justice must evolve to catch up with best practice and respond to the common sense of basic penalty of conviction. The prejudice is compounded where the accused turns out not to be guilty. Custodial sentencing should not be default conviction, especially where petty crimes are involved. Similarly, there are many instances in which the use of technology, the use of alternative resolution approaches, the use of alternative to prosecution could go a long way in achieving substantive justice without overburdening the criminal justice system. The need for robust integrity assurance framework is, critical, is a critical priority for NCAJ. The NCAJ's Committee on Anti-Corruption must deliver a strong, clear message to the nation that zero tolerance to corruption is a meaningful proposition and that the credibility and legitimacy of justice sector institutions must never be taken for granted. The NCAJ's strategic emphasis on the enhancement of access to justice by vulnerable groups is commendable, particularly noteworthy, is the escalation of efforts to improve the protection of children by the Committee on Child Justice, which culminated in the enactment of the Children's Act 2022. Every endeavor to advance the interests of children guarantees a strong future for our nation. Our children, therefore, matter, and the NCAJ's efforts are especially commendable. And as I said the other day, it is our collective responsibility as parents to make sure that we participate in ensuring that our children, whether in school or out of school, are within our watch so that they don't suffer the consequences that Madam Chief Justice has enumerated. I also appreciate the admirable work to enhance effective access to justice for groups whose freedoms and rights have traditionally been encumbered by stigma. These include persons with mental illness, intersex persons, as well as survivors of sexual and gender-based violence. It will come as no surprise that I am keenly interested in the NCAJ's model of grassroots service delivery. The court users committees 
are focal points in a democratized, bottom-up justice process. I commend this model unreservedly. Both the coordination of actors and delivery of services will increasingly depend on the extent of adoption and deployment of technology. The transformational power of technology remains underappreciated. It can transform the weakest link into a model and a threat into opportunity. I am confident that as chair of NCAJ Committee on ICT, Mr. Justice Isaac Lenaola is alive to all these possibilities and is providing leadership in the direction of the future. And maybe to confirm to you that the government of Kenya, we have now sorted out all the issues that encumbered our digitization of government services e-citizen platform and in a couple of weeks we will roll out a robust program on digitizing all government services 5,000 government services um, we will give <clears throat> in this process we will work with the judiciary to see whether we can build synergy in digitization of services in the judiciary so that we can support a seamless um, technology use across uh, government. We have also, um, we are working also on a program to ensure that that digitization exercise enables government to collect taxes. And I encourage the judiciary to support the process of government raising taxes, kicking out all people seeking refuge in the judiciary and who have refused to pay tax. I think the judiciary should not give them a safe haven. I have already discussed with the Kenya Revenue Authority that no matter should go to court unless it must, that we should try and sort out all matters, try to talk to our customers, try to talk to all taxpayers, try to get all the issues out of court. So whenever you see a matter now appearing in court, please know that we have exhausted all efforts to try and resolve that matter out of court and help us so that people who don't want to pay tax do not find any refuge in our court system. And this is why I have asked the Cabinet Secretary for ICT to be available to give the Ministry's full support to the NCAJ Working Committee whenever called upon to do anything for ensuring that you achieve your target of using technology to enhance the efficiency of delivery of our justice and the entire justice system. The maturation of the NCAJ and its significant achievements have firmly demonstrated that it is indispensable to the transformation of the national framework for access to justice and especially inclusive justice. I therefore agree that the establishment of NCAJ an autonomous agency is an idea whose time has come. The government will support the legislative process to achieve this objective. Told the Chief Justice, the President of the Supreme Court, that we are all ready. Uh, Attorney General will present to Cabinet and eventually to Parliament the law that will assist in ensuring that NCHA is firmly rooted on legal foundation. <clears throat> Finally, I wish to reiterate our pledge 
that despite prevailing budgetary challenges, we will unlock financial resources necessary to enhance access to justice in terms of infrastructure as well as personnel. I have agreed with the Chief Justice this morning that the pending four small claims courts in Nairobi, I will talk to the Governor of Nairobi so that we can expedite the completion of these courts because small claims courts are a, a bottom-up benefit and therefore, Madam Chief Justice, within the next 90 days, we will give you the four courts in Nairobi that have been outstanding so that you can set up the small claims courts in um, the various areas of Nairobi County. Also, to support the judiciary's effort in ensuring that there is efficient delivery of justice, uh, I have asked the Attorney General to present the two bills that have been outstanding for a while now to Cabinet tomorrow. The pensions for judges, which has been pending for, I'm told, four years, we will approve it tomorrow. We will consider it in, in, uh, in, in, in Cabinet tomorrow and um, forward it to Parliament for enactment so that we can support the judges and I am told by the Chief Justice that this will be a contributory scheme which is what we should be doing and it will go a long way in building um, resources and savings in our, in our country and therefore it has my very, uh, my full endorsement that this should be the way to go. Again, to support the efficiency of our judicial uh, system, the tribunal's bill will again be presented to cabinet tomorrow, again, so that we can be able to support the judiciary, provide the infrastructure for ensuring that we decongest uh, our court system by making sure that the support system in the tribunals are working. Um, again, it will assist us in making sure that justice is delivered efficiently. Um, let me also agree with uh, Madam Chief Justice that um, FGM should not be a conversation we are having in Kenya in the 21st century. We we must go out of our way, and I want to assure you of my administration's support in ensuring that we eliminate female genital mutilation in our country because it is not only retrogressive, but it is a danger to the health of all our girls. So that we will, we will, we will, we will work together. Um, and, and we will ensure that uh, we, we maintain, I know there is uh, maybe uh, a discussion as to why I am appearing in too many of the functions of the judiciary. I think they can confirm to you that I have never put a telephone call to anybody to ask them to do nothing. My support for the judiciary is so that they can effectively deliver justice to the people of Kenya, period. <laughs> and I want to congratulate all the actors. I am particularly pleased to see my friend uh, Eric Theuri here, who took me to court the other day when I met some, appoint <laughs> <laughs> when I met some appointments. And uh, I appreciate that is the wheels of justice. That, uh, and I'm very happy that he, he is not threatening to organize any demonstrations because he, he, did, not <laughs> he did not win the case. So I think we are, we are all in this space because we have to act in a manner, and everybody is entitled to do what they must do. And uh, it's okay to take government to court. It's okay to take me to court. I have no problem. If you have a, if you have a matter, 
And if I, if, if I lose, I have no problem. You know, I move on to the next. Uh, it means I was wrong because nobody is an angel. Everybody, uh, all of us can be wrong or right, but we leave it to the judiciary to decide whether one is guilty or one is innocent. I think that way we will be uh, affirming the foundation of the rule of law in our country. I congratulate the NCAJ for your fine achievements. I note that this has been made possible to a great extent by the diligent execution of your strategic plan. I therefore commend you for formulating the new strategic plan and wish you great success as you implement it. Asante ni sana, and may the good Lord bless you.